Our health reporter there, Gloria Milimo, thank you for that report. And in studio tonight, I have Dr. Michael Magoha. He's, he, he is a consultant neurosurgeon and Byron Brian, sorry, Tabani. I don't know why I'm mistaking the two. He's a clinician at the Kenya Association for the Welfare of People with Epilepsy. Thank you so much for joining me tonight on K24. Now, Brian, why is it important to know about epilepsy? Yeah, okay. Thank you for, for inviting us. Uh, epilepsy, it's important to know because we really need to, if we identify it, we identify it, we start treat treatment. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to know and start treatment. Okay. Yes. There's this notion, um, it's also in Gloria's package, about mistaking it for witchcraft. Yes. How is that so? Uh, you know, um, uh, the, we, have an, we have a very, okay, in the society currently, people understand epilepsy. They don't have full knowledge about epilepsy. So they, they end up seeking for other alternative ways, like maybe going to the witchcraft, witch doctors, and seeking any other treatments apart from the recommended treatment. Mm -hmm. Dr. Tari, what's the difference between seizures and epilepsy? Uh, thank you. That's an important point. Um, seizures is just, as we said by Dr. Desai, is an uncontrolled electrical impulse in the brain. Uh, so if you just imagine the brain as a ball of wires and with controllers, mm -hmm. so if you get a little cut in the wire or is the problem with the wire, the electrical impulse can move up and about. So that's a seizure. We only call it epilepsy is if you have a propensity to keep developing seizures. Mm -hmm. So if it keeps happening time and time again, unprovoked, then we classify you as epilepsy. So and, how, and how is it diagnosed? Uh, that's an important question. So seizures could be provoked or unprovoked seizures. Unprovoked uh, provoked seizures are more common. So things like hypoglycemia, you haven't eaten lots of alcohol use, you've taken lots of drugs, you've been in an accident. If you get that, then you could get a provoked seizure. Mm -hmm. If you have an unprovoked seizure, then we have to, the first thing we have to do is visit a doctor, get a history, and they examine you. Mm -hmm. So with the history, we would look to make sure that it's actually a seizure. And then based on that, we would send you for tests and imaging if needed. Mm -hmm. Then we'll classify you as a patient with epilepsy. So what are the first signs of a seizure? How will I know my partner or my child or my friend is going through that? Okay, that's quite important. Uh, seizures are very emotive and there are many different kinds. The ones that people tend to notice is what you call a generalized seizure where there's jerking rhythmic movements with frothing of the mouth. But if you take a step back and you remember, the brain controls every single thing. So seizures can be generalized with shaking or they can be simple focal point things, changes in mood, movements, or just periods of blanking out. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they can be missed but noticed by somebody close to them. Mm -hmm. yeah. What foods trigger seizures? Are there certain types of foods that guys uh, with epilepsy should not eat? Uh, no, uh, interestingly, no. Uh, a few things can provoke seizures, so um, if you say diapetogenic foods or foods that cause things like hypoglycemia, things like alcohol could cause that, but generally foods are not generally associated with mm -hmm. directly, so mm -hmm. it shouldn't change your diet in any way. So you emphasize on the alcohol bit, drugs, alcohol. What about the flashy lights? Let's talk about the flashy lights. Ah, fl flashing lights seems to be the joie de vivre. Everybody knows about, uh, you see it on TV all the time. So that's a type of epilepsy called photosensitive epilepsy. It's quite common. It's about uh, one in 4,000 epilepsy patients. That tends to be about 5% worldwide, so it tends to be quite common. But not all epilepsy is photosensitive epilepsy. That's an important distinction to make. Is it hereditary? Can I get it maybe if my mom or father has it, uh, or the bloodline? Yes, that it is true. Some forms of seizures are hereditary. Just the way we talked about the wires, sometimes you're born with a bad set of wires, or as you're getting born, a part of the wires could be damaged, mm -hmm. or you have a propensity to get damaged, or you could have a metabolic condition which mm -hmm. would predispose you to them getting damaged. Mm -hmm. So some forms of epilepsy could be, but not all mm -hmm. are the same. That's the most important take home point. Mm -hmm. Really quickly, Brian, tell us about the Kenya Association for the Welfare of People with Epilepsy and what are some of the services you provide for people going through epilepsy? Okay. Thank you. Uh, epilepsy, uh, Kakawe, or um, Kenya Association for the Welfare of the People with Epilepsy, is a, a, a non governmental organization uh, founded in the year 1981, is one of the oldest organizations. And currently, what we do, we measure on awareness creation 
and social support and also medical provision. Mm -hmm. So uh, through awareness, we'll help improve the health-seeking behavior mm -hmm. in our community. And also the uh, health pr practitioners will also be in a position to manage the, the, the seizures well. And how many people have you helped with this organization? Uh, actually, we have helped over, over 5,000 5, Kenyans. Oh, wow. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's really good. That's really good. Yeah. Dr. Tari, how do you treat this condition? Okay. Um, if a patient has recurrent unprovoked seizures and you classify them as epilepsy, the first thing that we would do is we would look for the cause. If you can identify the cause, then you, you make the next step on what to do. The first thing is trying to control the seizures using different drugs, and they all act differently depending on the type of seizure. Mm -hmm. In some cases, as the case we've seen, you, surgery is an option. So you can just go out and remove the mass of nerves or whatever is causing the impulse, and that's where we come in. Mm -hmm. So sometimes surgery is an option in selected cases. Okay, and at what ages is it usually common by? Like uh, before or after? Can it also happen to a child, five years old? Exactly, that's good. Seizures can affect anybody. They are extremely common, as they said. Mm -hmm. Everybody has about a 9% chance of getting at least one seizure in their lifetime. Uh, so not, and that doesn't mean epilepsy. So each stage of life has a different type of seizure. For example, children between the ages of six months to six years can get febrile seizures, which are quite common mm -hmm. if anybody has been sick or has a febrile illness. Mm -hmm. So Brian, people should not fear guys with epilepsy. Yeah, they should not fear. Mm -hmm. Because the, uh, no one can get through maybe sharing utensils, maybe through skin contact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they cannot get through that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, thank you so much, guys, for coming in studio tonight. Of course, you can, you. let's keep the conversation going on Twitter at K24TV. And my Twitter hand, handle is at Karimi underscore Karen. Let's take another short break. Of course, I'll be back with the business news. <laughs>